So you want to switch careers and get into machine learning or data science. That's where I was about eight years ago. I already knew some basics and tools then and thought it would be enough to apply to some jobs and learn more on the job, but I failed miserably. It took me a few years to learn a few important lessons about machine learning and data science. Here are 15 things I wish I knew earlier when getting into machine learning. Imposter syndrome happens to everyone. I thought long about which point to start this list with, but I think this is the most important one. It happens to all of us. I promise, don't get discouraged. We all have to start somewhere. Every time I get a new job, I feel this way. I felt this way with my first job as a data scientist. I felt this way the first time I taught a boot camp, thinking the other teachers knew more than me or even some of the students, only to find out that the other teachers felt the same way I did. I promise you even the smartest and most successful person has felt this way at some point. It's okay not to know everything. And honestly, I think if you don't feel it, that's the real problem. Because once you think you understand everything, you will make mistakes. Stay humble and be honest when you don't know something also with others. Pretending you understand when you don't will make it harder and harder to ask questions the longer you keep quiet. Be open about what you know and stay curious and ask questions. That's the only way to get better. In the fast moving field of machine learning, it's common to feel like you're always behind. Understand that everyone, even seasoned experts, feels this way at times. Stay focused on your own progress and learning journey. Fundamentals are your best friend. In machine learning, it's tempting to jump straight into using popular frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch or even scikit-learn, but mastering the core concepts, such as the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning, linear and logistic regression, loss functions, optimization techniques, and the bias variance trade-off, is far more critical for long-term success. A solid grasp of these fundamentals allows you to adapt to new tools, solve complex problems, and build models from scratch when necessary. Don't chase the latest trends without first understanding the foundational principles that underlie every machine learning algorithm. Additionally, and maybe even more importantly, I believe it's important to get a good grasp of the math behind the magic. It's easy to get caught up in using high-level libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Scikit-Learn, but understanding the mathematical foundations, linear algebra, calculus, and most importantly, statistics, will make you a far better machine learning practitioner. Getting a good mathematical intuition for how these algorithms work will give you a much better idea on when to use which algorithm, how to tune it properly, how to prepare your data effectively, and deciding when to look for more data, or when you need cleaner data, or when you need new features, and when you should tune more, and when you should use a simpler algorithm. Investing that time early on will save you a ton of time later on. I've said this a thousand times. I would hire a data scientist with a strong foundation in the basics and good intuition in statistics and data, over a specialized expert lacking that foundation any day. Today's hot algorithms and libraries will be replaced by others in the future, but what won't change are the fundamentals. So you're also future-proofing yourself, so you remain hireable. My most recent video goes over the core mathematical concepts you need to master before getting into the algorithms. Check it out. You don't need to memorize everything. A lot of machine learning knowledge is at your fingertips via documentation and online resources. Knowing where to find solutions is often more important than memorizing complex formulas. Also, if you followed my advice from before, you have a good intuition on the math behind the algorithms already. If you watched my video on the importance of mathematical intuition in machine learning, you know, to look for the meaning behind formulas instead of memorizing them. This will be much more helpful in choosing the right algorithms and tuning them. Memorizing formulas isn't necessary at all. Most of the hard work has been done by other people. If you understand the concepts behind the algorithms and the purpose of each algorithm, there is absolutely no need for memorization. All the details can quickly be found on the internet. Modeling isn't the hard part. Data is more important than models. The toughest parts are often before and after the modeling. Data pre-processing, feature engineering, model picking, and interpreting model results in a meaningful way. Even the best algorithm can't fix bad data. Spend time mastering data cleaning, pre-processing, and augmentation techniques. High quality data is often more impactful than the latest state of the art models, and not all data is created equal. Many beginners underestimate how much time is spent on cleaning and preparing data. This is often the most labor intensive part of a project and can make or break your model. The quality of your data often matters more than the quantity. A small but clean and relevant data set can outperform a massive, messy one. You can always go bigger later, but start with a small and clean data set. While tweaking hyperparameters can yield performance gains, it won't fix a poorly framed problem or bad data. Spend more time on the bigger picture, defining your objective, or cleaning your data and understanding your problem. Understand the business problem first. I think the key to getting a great data set and picking a fitting algorithm is truly understanding the business problem first. Truly think about what you're trying to do. For example, if you're tasked with building a machine learning model to predict customer churn, 
understanding the business problem helps you define what churn actually means for the company. Is it a customer who hasn't made a purchase in 30 days, 60 days, one who hasn't logged in in a year? Without this clarity, your model might optimize for the wrong target, leading to misaligned business outcomes and wasted resources. Also, if you're working for a client or with a non-technical team, you will need to be able to communicate your results with them and give actionable business recommendations. Knowing the technical side is crucial, but understanding the business problem you're solving is equally important, if not more. It's easy to get lost in the technical details and forget the bigger picture. The power of EDA and visualization. Every project starts here. Exploratory data analysis is the process of analyzing and visualizing data sets manually to uncover patterns and trends, helping to clean, understand, and prepare data for modeling. This goes hand in hand with understanding the business problem. Get a good idea of what your data is like, play with and test different hypotheses about your data. EDA helps you find patterns within the data, such as correlations between variables, outliers or anomalies that may impact your model. Through EDA, you can easily spot missing values, inconsistencies or errors in the data set. This ensures data quality before feeding it into the model. Visualizing the distributions of individual features helps to understand how your data is structured, whether it's skewed, normally distributed, or contains outliers. Many machine learning algorithms make assumptions about the data, for example, normality, independence. EDA helps validate these assumptions and determine if adjustments are needed. EDA will also help with model interpretability. By visually exploring the data and understanding its structure, you gain insights into how different features contribute to the outcome, making it easier to interpret and explain model results. EDA can indicate whether simpler models, for example, linear regression, or more complex algorithms like SVM or neural networks are appropriate based on the relationships in the data. Last but not least, EDA facilitates communication with others. Data visualizations produced during EDA, for example, scatter plots, histograms, and box plots, make it easier to explain findings and potential insights to non-technical stakeholders and will help guide future iterations of the modeling process through feedback loops with non-technical stakeholders. Feature engineering is key. Crafting meaningful features can often have a bigger impact on model performance than tuning hyperparameters or choosing advanced algorithms. Feature engineering involves creating new features from raw data, such as combining or transforming existing features to make them more relevant to the problem, improving model performance. Rescaling features ensures that variables with different units or ranges don't disproportionately influence the model. In tandem with EDA, feature engineering often involves handling missing values, either by imputing them or creating binary indicators for missingness. Techniques like principal component analysis, PCA, or feature selection methods help reduce the number of features, improving model efficiency, and preventing overfitting. You can also use feature engineering to introduce domain expertise into your data and thus algorithm. Suppose you're working on a machine learning model to predict whether a patient will be readmitted to the hospital within 30 days of discharge. Domain expertise from a healthcare professional can guide the creation of new features that significantly improve model performance. Healthcare professionals know that patients with frequent hospital visits are more likely to be readmitted. Using this domain knowledge, you can create a feature that calculates the time in days since the patient's last hospital visit. This could serve as a strong predictor for readmission risk. Don't get stuck in algorithm obsession. Don't ignore model interpretability and explainability. A complex model like a deep neural network might outperform simpler ones, but being able to explain your model's decisions is critical, especially in industries like healthcare or finance where trust is paramount. Many newcomers focus on using fancy algorithms, for example, deep learning, when simpler models like linear regression or decision trees could perform just as well or better for certain tasks. Deep learning tends to give you a black box, often outperforming simpler models, but lacking interpretability and actionable insight, which is often useless in business settings where we want to learn about a problem and act based on our findings. Simpler models are easier to explain to non-technical people. If you are working with a healthcare professional, it is better to tell them doubling this medication will triple the risk of death than saying, this node in the 54th layer of the network represents a combination of drugs administered and a little bit of body weight in the neighborhood they grew up in. Probably kind of. Even if the predictions are more accurate, also bigger, more complex models are easier to overfit and thus tend to generalize less well. In many cases, having a model that is interpretable is more important than one that has a higher accuracy. Stakeholders often need to trust the results and explainability builds that trust. And in a similar vein, there's no one size fits all model. No single algorithm works for every problem. Learn to experiment with a variety of approaches. Ensemble methods, neural networks, decision trees, and more. The best model often depends on the specific data and task at hand. When in doubt, err on the side of the simpler model, in particular when starting out. Understanding 
the bias variance trade-off, and proper validation are key to building useful models. This concept is so important, I cannot stress it enough. Truly understanding what bias and variance really mean and how they are related to overfitting and underfitting and generalization to unseen data will unlock new levels in machine learning for you. The bias variance trade-off is a key concept in machine learning that explains the balance between how well a model fits to training data and how well it generalizes to new data. Bias refers to errors introduced by oversimplifying the model, causing it to miss patterns in the data, also called underfitting. Variance, on the other hand, refers to a model that is too complex and overfits the training data, capturing noise and fluctuations that don't generalize well to unseen data. This is where validation becomes important. Validation helps by giving an early indication of model performance on unseen data, allowing you to adjust the model before testing. But doing this too much can again lead to overfitting to the validation set. Cross-validation takes this a step further by splitting the data into multiple subsets and rotating the training and validation phases, providing a more robust and reliable estimate of how well the model will perform on new data. This is crucial for preventing overfitting, ensuring your model can generalize effectively to real-world scenarios. But the final score of your model comes from the test set, which is a set that has never been seen and was neither part of the train or validation or cross-validation sets. The test set is supposed to be used just once. But watch out for data leakage, which occurs when information from outside the training dataset is inadvertently included in the model during training, giving the model an unfair advantage. Preventing data leakage is critical to ensuring the model can generalize effectively in real-world scenarios. Data leakage can come from seemingly innocent things, like using even parts of the test, or validation set to inform feature engineering, outlier detection, or imputation. Just a note on the term variance. In this context, it means model sensitivity and is not to be confused with variance as it relates to your data, as in explained variance. While the origin of the term is the same, it has become two separate concepts with the same name. Generalize before specializing. Machine learning is broad and there are always new trends and topics. Where should you start? My advice? Early on, spend most of your time on the fundamentals, like statistics and the basic machine learning models, like regression and tree-based algorithms and then start exploring various specialized subfields like neural networks, NLP, computer vision, reinforcement learning, etc. before diving deep into a niche. Ideally do this with some real world projects, maybe with some friends. This helps build a solid foundation and discover your passion. Once you find a field or two you are passionate about, you can dive deep. When you become a specialist at something, especially with a strong generalist foundation, you can make yourself invaluable to very specific clients and employers, while your generalist foundation keeps you adaptable. Data science is a team sport. Machine learning is rarely a solo endeavor. You'll work with other data scientists, data engineers, software and web developers, designers, domain experts, and other stakeholders, often business people and managers. Soft skills, like communicating complex ideas clearly and listening to non-technical perspectives, are just as important as technical know-how. Also, more often than not, you will not be solving your own problem, but you will do it for a company or a client that probably knows much more about the domain than you. Make sure you listen to them, and truly understand what they want and let it guide your modeling. Also make sure that you learn how to dial down the jargon and make yourself understood. Learn how to make data accessible with visualizations and slideshows and even Excel spreadsheets where needed. As for collaboration with technical partners like other data scientists, developers and data engineers, make sure you get a good grasp on version control systems like Git early on, as it can save headaches later when collaborating with others or tracking changes to data, code, and models. Learning Git well will also allow you to track your own code well, help you deploy libraries and projects of other people, and generally make you much more attractive for the tech job market. This is absolutely essential if you want to do anything related to coding. I have a number of Git-related tutorials on this channel. I will leave links in the description. In a similar vein as Git, good documentation saves time in the long run. This goes for working with other programmers and scientists on the same code, but also helps you understand your own code when you haven't looked at it for a while. Documenting your code, data sources, and findings might seem tedious at first, but will save you and your team significant time in the future. Believe me, you'll always be a student. Machine learning is evolving rapidly. Techniques, tools, and algorithms that are cutting edge today may become obsolete tomorrow. You will never have mastered machine learning. Keep learning continuously and be adaptable to new advancements. Tech in general, but AI and machine learning in particular, are fields that are great if you love learning as you will never know everything. You might not become a master at any particular topic, but you can become a master at learning and adapting, which is truly the most important skill in tech because no project is like any other. There's more to AI than machine learning. Machine learning is hard. To become good, you need to know how to program well, you need to have strong math and statistics skills, and good business and research intuition. 
The concepts are complex and can't be mastered through short courses. Recently, demand for data science roles has dropped compared to similar positions. Companies are hiring fewer inexperienced machine learning and data scientists due to economic slowdown and the high learning curve, but also due to diversification of the roles in AI. Because of the recent rise of generative AI, some machine learning roles are sometimes being replaced by roles in generative AI, for example, prompt engineering or LLMs. Generative AI roles often don't require deep machine learning expertise. Basic knowledge of LLMs, APIs, and backend development suffices. Big tech companies are leading the charge, and smaller companies follow by integrating AI into products, for example, chatbots. And there is more. Alternative roles in AI that don't require deep machine learning knowledge for you to consider include data engineer, MLOps engineer, AI product manager, and data analyst. Tutorials and Kaggle competitions are great for honing your skills, but real-world applications often involve noisy, incomplete, or unbalanced datasets. While Kaggle competitions are better than fake toy datasets from tutorials and class assignments, nothing beats real-world data in training a real data scientist. Get hands-on experience with real business problems to understand the full life cycle of machine learning projects. This is important for all the reasons we just mentioned. Once in the real world, either at your first data scientist position or with your first client or at your own startup, your data will be messy. That's just the way real world data is. This can be quite a shock after graduating from a data science bootcamp or after having done tutorials on your own with cleaned up toy data. Having real world projects will help you test and train all these skills with lower stakes than when in your first real job. Read about the industry of the real world project to get an idea of the business problem. Look at and play with the data, clean it up manually, visualize it and form and test hypotheses you make about the data and problem at hand. Engineer features that are informed by your study of the business problem and your research of the industry. Real world projects are unpredictable, which will build resilience and real creativity and problem solving and research skills, which will be very important for real jobs. So if you taught yourself or just graduated a machine learning course, try to find some open source projects, freelancing gigs or internships, or even help a friend or family member with their business problem to get started on some real projects to hone these skills. This will also look good on your CV and build your portfolio and your network. Network as much as you can. You might not want to hear this, but a lot of success in machine learning, as in most other fields, actually comes from networking. This is actually maybe more a lesson for life than for tech. Opportunities arise from putting yourself out there. If you ask around in your social circle for how people got their jobs, it's often through a friend or, or some other sort of connection. This is particularly true for freelancers and self-employed people, but also for regular employees. If I think back on my own life, most opportunities came from random connections I made. One of my most successful startups started with meeting another student at a networking event at school. We found an investor through a completely different connection that I made at a completely different time when reaching out to people on LinkedIn to find a job. Sometimes it's a job, but it can also be clients, co-founders, mentors, friends, or even romantic partners that you meet like this. Life is full of stories like this. Your soft skills will bring you further than any technical skills. So get yourself out there, join a hackathon, go to networking events, evening classes, boot camps, reach out to people on LinkedIn, or go to business mixers and cocktail parties, or host some yourself. And tell people about yourself and your interests and ask them about their passions and projects, but be friendly and genuine about it. You will be surprised by what happens. If you found this video helpful, share it with someone who you think might also like it and get started on one of the tutorials in the description or on this very channel. Also consider liking the video and subscribing to be notified about similar content in the future. Thanks for watching.